Hello everyone, this is Flatline, and today I'm going to be doing a PVT video for you. I've been doing that many videos lately. And this game, we're going to, or in this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about how to deal with mech uh, robo style. There's different ways of dealing with mech for Protoss. You could go for the the one I like a lot is, or that I liked before, was going straight for Sky Toss. Uh, it's just a, a pretty good build with Void Rays, really, really good against most of the mecking uh, units that they could give out to you. So it gets really difficult, and but there are timings that Terrans can do that can actually punish it. You know, they go for that Mass Widowmine style. That's where it gets really dicey for you. Uh, mass Widowmine tank uh, SCV can can hit a pretty good timing if you go for that straight Sky Toss build. Like if you rush for Sky Toss. It takes a while for you to get that kind of army that you want that's really really strong right like it two void race is not that big of a deal 10 void race is a big deal right so that's what i was talking about with the sky toss it, it seems like there's a, like a, a window where they can actually hit you and hurt you so that means the build has some flaws in it i wanted a build where it seems pretty flawless from the get-go and just 100 percent reactionary to if i scout this then this is how i should react and allow me to defend the mecking uh, or the mech timing push that they kind of do against you. So, this game, my opponent's going to be a legend. He's the Red Terran. Now, he's pretty well known for doing mech in PvT. And occasionally he'll do proxy 2 racks as well. But uh, on this map, you really can't do proxy 2 racks just because of the rush distance and the fact that it's pretty random. It's a four player map, a pure four player map. So, you actually have to scout three other bases. And if you put the barracks like right in the middle of the, of the map, it takes like a minute to get to the other side or to another base. So definitely not worth to do the proxy two racks. Now on this map, I tend to go for Nexus first against Terran because, like I said, it's pretty random. You don't really know where your opponent is. It's a 33% chance of you actually scouting him first. He's actually going to be able to scout me first. So lucky for him. Uh, and then there's, I don't really have to have an issue with, with uh, Reapers, you know, there's only one spot that they can actually abuse, which is this area. It's the front of your base, so they can't really go into your natural and, and harass you there, pop out, and then go back into your main and do some harass right there. It's really hard for them to maneuver around with their Reapers, so. Nexus first seems pretty, pretty good. Now there's also a couple of those that Nexus first is pretty weak against. One of them is going to be the gas first into hellion build and so that's why i am walling off like this this is one of the reasons why you don't if you ever watch me play i don't really go nexus first on whirlwind even though it's a four player map it's pretty big just like this map the difference is the ramp the ramp at the natural you can't really wall off this one you can wall off i actually like to wall off against terran with two pylons and a gateway and anytime I want to get a third base, I just kill a pylon. Remember, that's only 100 minerals. That's basically a zealot that you end up losing. Um, that's well, that's definitely worth it, uh, considering to be safe against a hellion, like a 530 hellion in uh, run by. You can't really run by, right? Because he's kind of blocked out. So he has to wait until he gets drops. And anytime I see him with that, then all I have to do is defend that. It's the only thing I need to worry about at this point. But besides that, I really don't need to worry about anything else. A legend, he is going for CC first into double gas, getting a very, very quick factory. You can see he's playing super greedy, and that's perfectly fine by him. This is a very greedy map, and it kind of encourages it with the end base uh, natural here. There we go. I'm going to wall this off and go ahead and scout now. The reason why I like to scout around this time is because... What's the point of scouting earlier than this, right? I, I'm not trying to go for a push, I'm just playing really passive. The only reason why I want to scout at this time is so that I know where he's at. If you, you know, the chances of him being up here, 33%, right? Because there's three other spots he could be in, so I might miss that spot. Might have to go over here and check him. And by the time he gets there, I should have enough for a hallucination and I can scout here. But luckily, I find out he's over here. And we're going to go to my vision real quick and see what I saw. I saw a tech lab being added onto something and a barracks with a reactor on it and a couple of marines. No bunkers though. But nonetheless the fact that he's adding on these uh, tech structures 
or these add-ons means he's going to be dedicating towards a later timing. He's not going to be pushing right now, he's going to be pushing a little bit later uh, in the game. So. Uh, add on these uh, extra gateways, pretty much playing standard. Uh, I actually wanted to go up to three gateways, not four gateways. It, it just, it's just like a, a habit for me to add up to four gateways for some reason. And I'll be getting my observer once again. I still don't know exactly if he is going next or not. So not hard counter this build yet. Even though I know him as a player, I still want to play pretty much as if I was playing any random Terran on the ladder. So I'm going up double forge. Pretty much my standard in PVT right now with the robotics bay. And I'm gonna go ahead and scout with my hallucinated phoenix. Now look around, look around. Okay, he's got double, he's got triple factory and a starport on the way with a tech lab on it. So the tech lab kind of assumed, you know, it's probably gonna be Banshee, it could be a Raven. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much what he did. Oh, and he's pushing up the front of my base here. This is unfortunate for me because, see, I put most of my safe stuff right here on this side because of the fact that, you know, the way he's positioned on this map, he's on the left side of the map, uh, the left side of me. So everything on the left is generally going to be where he's going to be dropping or harassing, if anything. But instead, he's dropping in the front right here, and this can actually be a that and he sets up really nice looking there. So I just got to prevent that from happening. I played super greedy, he killed off the gateway, and adding on. Uh, two more additional robots, and this is pretty much how I respond again. I like to go up to basically whatever factory number he has is what I'm doing. So generally on two bases there are like three factories, so I'm going to go to three robots. Three robots are a good number. And yeah, the uh, plus one armor, plus one attack, pretty standard for me. You actually, I'm gonna stop making getting plus one armor. I mean, after plus one armor, I'm just gonna stop. The armor's not really a big thing when you're facing mech. It's mainly gonna be your army composition and your plus uh, and your attack upgrades. So I'm gonna cut off the armor upgrade and just focus on my plus one or my attack upgrades and my army composition. So my army composition is gonna be mainly of the robotics facility. Remember, I also get my robotics bay blindly before I even scout what he's doing. So I'm just going to be going uh, Immortal Colossus. Immortal Colossus is pretty much what I'm going for. And I see where his army's at. You can see the vision of it. You can see where his army's at. I also can see his upgrades. Pretty standard for me. Getting my third base as well. The reason I'm getting my third base. I have a lot of probes right here, and I can afford it. Um, when you're facing mech or you're going for this triple robo, your gas is going to be tied up quite heavily, right? So, you want to get a third base, you can add on that fifth and sixth gas to help you actually produce out of those uh, production buildings. And you want to go up to three Colossus, and then the rest of the And you want to stop at three Colossus because you don't want to fully commit to the it's really hard to produce three Colossus at a time and get your upgrades going. So, and then the three Colossus is a pretty good number to stop at because it actually kills off or soft the nubs the, uh, the ground. The reason why you're pretty much getting the Colossus is so you can kill off everything that's supporting the main mech units of the army. Like for instance on this one, he's going to be going Thor heavy. And Thor's are okay against Colossus. I f in fact, I feel like Thors are better than Colossus one-on-one, -on -one, but they're pretty bad against Immortals, right? So what you want to do with the Colossus is kill off everything so that way the Immortals can target the Thors. That's pretty much the philosophy behind this army composition. Going for have my three Colossus, you can see me produce nothing but Immortals from now on. So getting my plus one or plus two attack, adding on extra gateways, getting my Temple Archives. The Temple Archives is there for the uh, either Storm or Feedback or Archons. Generally it's just going to be used for Archons at this point because he is going for a push at this point. Of course Feedbacks will help. Now a couple things you want to do is poke. You know, force the PDD right there far away from the That's a pretty nice thing. Now this tank 
pretty exposed, right? I'm just gonna use two immortals to focus fire that. And then my cam will click. And look at this. Remember what I said? The Colossus is there just to clean up everything that's supporting the Thors, and now the Thors are exposed to the immortals, and that's where you're gonna start seeing these immortals do what? Look how quickly these Thors just instantly die. Not even close whatsoever, and there's a GG from him, so deal with Meg to recap if you are a little bit confused on the video itself, I'm sorry. You... Now this is straight up reactionary of course, so I think this is a pretty nice build. Basically, you go for that core, you know, structure and do the one gate expand or some kind of macro play, uh, nexus first, it doesn't matter. The beginning opening does not matter. The buildings you get does matter. You want to have at least three gateways and a robo. The robo help you send out uh, an observer. I do suggest uh, somehow to get a sentry out pretty quickly. Either it could go stalker then sentry or sentry first, either one, whatever you feel comfortable with. And the final way to get some kind of scout in so you can see him going mech. Once you establish that they're going mech, see how many factories they're going up to. If they are on three factories, which is generally what they're going to be going up on if they're on two base, then you go up on a three robos as well. So you go up to three robos for you. Uh, as you Once you get that and they're not pressuring you, you should be able to establish a third base because you should have a lot of minerals. The problem with your build is that you need gas, so you can get the third base, get the gas going. So from there, you want to get up to three Colossus, because if you're doing this blindly, uh, or unless you can scout this, okay, so let me rewind real quick. If you are able to scout before you have to throw down a robotics bay, or before you throw down a robotics bay, and you actually scout and you see them going back, you do have the chance to go double robo. Twilight Council into Quick Storm. You could do that composition instead of the three Robo. You could go for the double mortal production and use the Storm to help uh, comp uh, substitute for the Colossus. Now, however, if you do it like me, where you get the Robotics Bay before you're, you know, before you can even scout them going Mech, then I would suggest you going three Robos uh, instead of the two Robo Twilight Council into High Templar Storm. So once you get this, you either have High Templar Immortal or you go Colossus Immortal, either one. Once you establish this, what you want to do is poke, you know, for some an engagement and then back up. You have to remember Hellbats only have range 3, I believe. I believe it's range 3 on these units here. I'm not 100% sure though. I know that it's not that, not that much though. It's three or two, so you should be able to kite them with your mortals and your Colossus. Soften them up a little bit with your Colossus especially. Uh, the main thing about the Colossus, about the storm, it's mainly to, to kill off or to remove the, the fat of the army. But basically the supporting cast, the, the Hellbats is what you pretty much want to get rid of. So that way the Thors, the tanks are exposed, which allows your mortals to do its damage against them. Now. They're going for the macro build. They're going up to ghost. That's where you have to transition out of this and start adding on a uh, tempest to pull them out of position, or you have to go for a high templar versus ghost type of thing, which can get pretty, pretty difficult. But uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. If this doesn't help you, or if this is still confusing for you, I'm totally, totally sorry. Uh, just leave a comment or a question. In the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can uh, quick update I won't be having internet for I think after Saturday I won't be having internet uh, just because I'm moving and won't be having it until who knows when uh, but I will be releasing a huge gift for everyone so coming up this week so just, just stay tuned and uh if this does help you awesome you know like it uh share it and all that kind of jazz if you haven't already please follow me on twitch and twitter and you can check out my website at flatlinese2.com and check out my team my team's website we actually picked up some pretty strong protoss players and some terrans and zergs it's actually becoming a pretty sick lineup if i must say for especially in the na scene 
at demosesports.com. And yeah, thanks guys for watching, and I'll see you later.